All right, cool beans. Hope you guys did enjoy that small montage. I'm Hex. I'm finally gonna be going over my updated Nightblade build for the Ions of Athelia patch, update 41, whatever it's called. Let's just get out of the way. This will be a cheese proc set build. Yes, we are running a cheese proc set. You have been warned. So I don't wanna hear any complaining in the comments. You've been warned. If that annoys you, doors right over there, go out. For those people that don't mind proc sets or just love seeing builds, this build is honestly some of the easiest damage you can ever do because this process is just getting out of hand. Does, does instant damage, AOE, reduces armor, grants you 100 weapon spell damage with a low cooldown. If that sounds the same, it is. And plus, Nightblade's got the biggest buffs this pack. I don't know why they keep getting buffed, but literally, you have infinite sustain from a new rework skill. Your in caps can do 10% bonus damage. That debuff they have for taking more damage can last longer. <laughs> I don't know who's balancing Nightblade, but it's just getting out of hand, bro. But sorry for the delay in the uploads. I've been grinding my PC account very hard right now. So you can tell I am actually on PC. But back to the build. Not only does this build come with the meta tankiness, it comes with some of the best sustain ever seen. Like You can literally build no sustain on a Nightblade and have the best sustain in the entire game because of siphoning attacks. Plus the damage is just insane. If you sometimes just even light attacking into a concealed, you'll burst people for over half their health with this proc set. Like it's just insane. But how exactly we get the strong build in order? Stick around to the end and I'll show you exactly how. But before we get started, if you guys hit the like and subscribe button, it really goes a long way. Greatly do appreciate it. But without further ado, let's end cap our way into the build. Okay, so for the skills, we're gonna be going over many variations, whether you wanna go more into mag, more into stam, whether you're running a sustain set or more of a damage set back bar. There's a few options I'm gonna be going over. So let's just quickly go over. When I get to probably the spammable, that's probably the only one that's gonna be the one you change. Everything else is pretty much universal. So first go is power extraction. Basically you do damage in an AOE, does damage, okay, not really meant for them. Yeah, you could pull a Nightblade of Stealth or catch people mid-roll dodge, because I was actually catching a lot of people mid-roll dodge. Like, they survive with a sliver of health, they CC break and roll dodge, and I would always catch them with this. But the main thing is, is if you hit an enemy with this ability, you get major brutality and sorcery, your 20% weapon and spell damage, as well as minor courage, increasing your weapon and spell damage by a further 215 flat amount for 30 seconds. And if that wasn't enough, any enemy hit with this ability gets minor cowardice applied to them, reducing their weapon to spell damage by 215. I'll get to in a little bit why reducing their weapon to spell damage is really strong when we go over our next skill, which is Mass Hysteria, or most commonly referred to as the Nightblade Fear. When you think of the word fear, this is the fear. This is the Nightblade Fear. You basically cast this ability and you fear targets around you. Fear. It's basically a stun. They just kind of cower there in fear before they sort of like run away from you. Now they just basically, it's just, it's just another form of a stun for five seconds. That is a long time. If they don't have the stand to break that. You're for sure going to put them down because Nightblades hit really, really hard. And if that wasn't enough, the main thing that sells me on mass hysteria, enemies that are within the fear range are also afflicted with major cowardice reducing their weapon and spell damage by 430. So these two abilities alone reduce their weapon and spell damage by over 600, and that's base. So an extra 20% from their you know weapon and spell damage buffs, so you're actually like reducing their weapon and spell damage by over like 700, which is kind of insane. Not only are they doing less damage to you and your teammates, they're also getting less heals because that's less weapon and spell damage to their heals, like Vigor, Healthy Offering, Coax, like, it's just crazy what it does. That's really the sleeper on there. 
However, this is your flex spot. If you do want to go the higher damaging route and you don't want mass hysteria for whatever reason, you could put Killer's Blade here. Killer's Blade is really strong. I feel like I really wish I could slot and execute with this. The only way to slot and execute on the stand build would be to run the sustain set on the back bar, Wretched Vitality, instead of Rallying Cry. If you're running Rallying Cry, you need to have this one skill slotted, which is, let's go right, I guess. Siphoning Attacks. This skill is beyond bonkers right now. This is legit breaking Nightblade right now. You cost health, over 4,300 health. You instantly restore 2,600 mag and stam. Now you might be saying, uh, a dark deal that costs mag and stam? Why would I do that? Well, the thing is, it's instant cast. You don't have to cast it, so you can't get interrupted. And you get no downside. Unlike there's a certain skill here in the Mages Guild called Equilibrium, costs over half more and you restore slightly more mag and no stand, but you also reduce your healing done and damage heals by 50%. This skill, if you cast it, no downside, you get this resources instantly. So like, let's say I'm magged out, like let's say, oh, I need a cloak away, I need a cloak. I get one cloak away, I can cast the skill twice, look, and go back into my cloak and literally net resources. Now, if I want, I can cast a vigor, go back into my cloak and look at that, I am getting now you might be saying, oh, this is not before Battle Spear. You're going to get half the healing. Trust me, half the healing in PvP, you're still going to net You're still gonna net resources with this thing because that passive, while slotted on either bar, you're, you heal for over 1,400 health and restore 200 mag and stam with a one second cooldown. Any damage. Before it used to be light attacks, it's just while slotted, any damage. Your light attacks, your abilities, even status effects like burning and dots will proc this on any bar I, I don't know that's literally a wretched vitality on a skill with the heal I, this is for sure gonna get nerfed I, I i can't see a world where this isn't gonna get nerfed as of making this video this is like two days before pts on monday i'm recording this video on saturday two days if you are running wretched vitality and don't want to run this skill for whatever reason then you could put killer's blade here but you honestly don't even renate it because siphon attacks is just a broken skill right now it's just so broken Next skill is Merciless Resolve. This is the Nightblade Bro proc. Basically, while you have this ability slotted, you gotta love that. Two abilities just having it slotted, you get stacks. For every light attack, you get one stack, and every fully charged heavy, you get two stacks, up to five stacks total. Each stack gives you 60 weapon and spell damage. So I have max stacks, 300 weapon and spell damage, and at full max stacks, you transform this into the bow proc. Basically, you're able to fire this ability and hit extremely hard with the bow proc. And this thing does more damage than your in-cap. Like, look at this, 15.7 unbuffed. Our in-cap, only 12.7 or almost 14K. Yeah, this skill is crazy. And it has flavor of if you're within melee range, which we should always be within melee range, you heal for over half of the damage done. There's been times where I hit somebody for like a 20K plus Merciless Resolve and I heal for like 12K. It's, 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 it's insane. And next skill is... You're spammable depending on whether you're mag or stam this will depend what you run so if obviously if you are a mag you go conceal weapon if you are stam more into the stam morphs then you go obviously surprise attack surprise attack converts to the stam ability does physical damage and always applies the thunder effect it does initial damage but the main thing is it applies a minor breach which is almost 3k armor shred the main thing as of this patch whenever you apply sudden to an enemy you the player yourself will get 100 weapon spell damage anytime you hit this ability I don't know who thought that was a great idea, but it's there now. Yep. And you also get some flavor. It's always a crit when you hit him from behind. Now, if you're going more into the Magmorph, you will conceal weapon. This thing is pretty good. Like this thing does 10% bonus damage at all times, which is really nice. And whenever you leave sneak or invisibility while this ability is slotted, you also get 10% more damage done for 15 seconds on this ability. So kind of like, I kind of like this more for the Magmorph, but it's personally up to you. You can go either one. They're really good, obviously. If you want to go more into the roly poly, you go to stam more. If you want to play more of a mag blade, then you go conceal weapon. I was playing more of a stam build, so that's why I went to surprise attack. And for ultimate, we do run incapacitating strike, or most common referred to as id cap. This, I don't know who decided, but Nightblade just got nothing but buffs this patch. Like nothing but buffs. So we got still got the flavor of, you know, <laughs> casting this ability. You basically hit them really hard. You also make them take 20% bonus damage from your attacks for eight seconds. And as of this patch, I don't know why, if cast with 130 more ultimate, you instill deal 10% bonus damage, almost 14k unbuffed, stun the enemy for 3 seconds, and also increases the duration they take bonus damage from you from 8 
to 12 seconds. I, their reasoning, from what I understand, is that they're very underperforming in PvE land. So, in a hasty decision, they decide to buff them, not realizing this is very toxic for PvP. So, yeah. <laughs> if you go for the stun, you're absolutely going to be melting players. Not only do you hit harder, just the pressure of having four more seconds of just bonus damage to them, it's just insane. And for the back bar, it's pretty much universal for the back bar. For the first skill we do run is Race Against Time. This is basically our snare immunity. This is how we get rid of roots and snares on us for four seconds. It just happens to grab Major Expedition and Minor Force. Now, there is a lot of people that are swapping over to Phantasmal Escape. I see that this is becoming like kind of the flavor of the, I don't want to say like in a bad way. This is kind of the flavor of the, the month right now. Like people are swapping over to Phantasmal Escape. You can run Phantasmal Escape. It's a very good option, especially if you don't want to grind Cedric. Major Evasion, 20% damage reduction from AoEs. So, I mean, Tethers, even, um, what's that one, that one set? Tarnished Nightmare is considered AoE, so that's actually will reduce that. And there's also some flavor. Whenever you take direct damage, you reduce the cost of your next roll dollars by 10%, stacking up to 100%. So basically, you can legit get a free roll dodge sometimes, like every half, like every five seconds, basically. So, but the thing is, what I really like about Race Against Time is that burst of speed. You cast this, no one's catching you. And also you get minor force. You hit extremely hard too. But if you don't want to grind it or you want to be tankier, Phantasmal Escape, perfect option. Next skill is Elemental Susceptibility or most common for two as LA Sus. This is basically how we get major breach on the build. Almost 6K armor shed on a target. It's free, has a really long range. And whenever you cast a skill initially and every seven and a half seconds after, you apply burning, chill, to concuss. Burning, a dot, concuss, minor vuln, chilled, minor maim. And we all know what happens when you put chilled on an enemy with a nice staff equip, which we do have. You put minor brit on the target, making them take 10% bonus damage from all crits, your crits, your teammates crits, even the third enemy alliance crits. It's free, I, I don't know why it's free. Like, don't ask me why. And also anytime these, like it reapplies to status effects, this is what pulled nicely out of stealth. So if you really wanted to be a cheese lord and there's four of you guys and you guys all cast this, you're gonna keep pulling that knife out of stealth, it's gonna annoy them. Next skill is Resolving Vigor. This is obviously just our burst hop. Basically an insane heal over time. Heal for a lot over five seconds and grants us minor resolve. Next skill is Shadowy Disguise. This is basically our invis. This is how we turn invisible, boom. Our next directed damage attack will also do, will be always guaranteed a crit. And I don't know why, but while started on either bar, you get major prophecy and savagery. Your 12% weapon is spell crit on both bars. Yeah, night blades are just they're just bloated with everything. They just get everything for free. Like they don't even have to run the thing. Like every other class has to run an armor buff or run shoot on. This class doesn't even have to. You cast your cloak or you cast your spammable, you get your armor buff. Yeah, imagine if Shadow Barry didn't exist and you actually had to cast an armor buff. Anyways, besides the point. <laughs> yeah. Next skill is Healthy Offering. This is basically our burst skill. This is what really shoots us up when we're really low. This is what's going to shoot us up. If you crit heal this thing, you can crit heal this thing for like 15k sometimes at a keep. It's pretty crazy. You do have that quote unquote downside of, you know, taking 1080 damage over three seconds, which can stack, but it's so minimal with the haunts we have. Plus you get minor mending to offset it for eight for 10 seconds. Like it's just, it's just insane. And last skill, and for our ultimate, we do run temporal guard just for the simple passive wall slotted grants his minor protection. But if you don't want to grind such because I totally understand, then you could put on soul tether back here. Um, you could put soul tether, but I'd probably recommend soul siphon. Just that burst, you'll basically shoots you to full health and grants you major vitality to you and your allies. The thing is you can also heal allies with this, which is pretty nice. All right, but enough, let's go with the stat sheets. All right, so for our stat sheets, they're pretty much gonna be very similar. If you wanna go more into mag, obviously you're probably gonna have more mag than you have stam, like probably 22K plus pushing. For, for me, I went more into the stam version. So max mag over 18K, really nice. Max health over 32K. Wow, I can honestly put more points in the max stam because my max stam is pretty low at 21.6K. Not bad, but still pretty good. And our mag recov is at 1202 and our stam recov is at 1220. That's before a pot, so if we just pop a simple tripod here, we get almost 1,500 mag recov and over 1,500 stam recov. That's really nice. Might look a little low, but you have to realize this skill, siphon attacks, basically gives us 400 mag and stam recov. And if you really wanted to get to it, like let's say you're really magged out, you only have time for one mag, like one cloak, but boom, cast it. 
I can cast two of these skills, go back into Cloak, cast two more, go back into Cloak. Now a little delay in the server. I'm going to be saying, what if I need a heal? You can just cast a Vigor and you can keep doing it in stealth. You're really low. The, like, it's just, it's just so crazy. Like, there's times where I'm like 1vx and I'll literally cast this in front of players into their face and they still can't burst me down. But anyways, back to the stat sheets. And our weapon is spell damage. So, there, so for our fully prompt weapon spell damage, all you got to do is be in PvP. You got to crit on your back bar. Mbo. Come on. Come on, baby. And all we got to do is hit now, hit this ability. Come out of cloak. And look at that. Our weapon is spell damage is over basically almost 6,100 weapon is spell damage. That's insane. And that's before a battle works proc. And our weapon crit, when we crit, we get over 47% weapon crit. That's even more insane. And our weapon and spell pin is over 10k. And that's before Balors. And I mean, we all want to see the, the damage of Balors, right? Let's check it out. Now for our physical and spell pin, over 10k. This might fluctuate between you. It might bounce back between like 7k up to 10k. The reason it does that is because this little passive here. Uh, where is it? Is it not pressure points? Master Assassin. This thing isn't supposed to show up on the tool on your tooltips, but sometimes it does. So that's why sometimes your penetration will show up a little higher. The thing is, it might look a little low, but you have to realize we do have access to major breach and minor breach, which is almost 9k penetration. So this is basically 19k pen we have on a target, and that's before battle lurks. And I mean, let's just check it out with the fully prop battle lurks. So fully prop battle lurks, all you gotta do is make sure to create on your back bar, boom. Go into cloak, cast one skill, this little AoE, boom. And then we're going to in-cap you. Look at that. Weapon of Spell Damage was over 6,700. And our physical and spell penetration is over 21k. Which is basically 30k with minor and major breach on. And now for our resist on our back bar. All you got to do is just pop a Vigor and cast a Cloak. And boom. Spell resist over 29.7k. And our physical resist is over 28.3k. And our crit resist is over 3,700. That's basically 57% damage mitigation from the bonus damage of crit. Now for attributes, honestly, you could probably go 54 points in the stam and then 10 points in the health. I felt like this is a little too much health for me. On our front bar, especially. So yeah, but if you are going more into mag, obviously you just put 54 or 44 into mag and then the rest into health. For the food, we do run Jewel of the Mistral, same purple food, perfectly fine. And for the Mundus, we do run the Shadow because Nightblade, we especially have really, really high crit on this build. So the Shadow is just perfect. It increases our critical damage and critical healing by 11%. And obviously, we are a stage three vampire for one simple, simple passive. Or I guess two passives because Nightblade is just that good, I guess. The main one, Undeath. The lower health we are, the tanker we become, and obviously, Strike from the Shadow. When we leave Sneak or Invisibility, in our case, it's always going to be Invisibility. Like you can see here, like 4220 weapon and spell damage. If I leave, if I cast a skill, 4532 for six seconds, then it's going to go away, watch. There you go. See, I I don't know. And for our race, we are a kitty cat. I mean, Khajiit. Khajiit is just hands down the best for Nightblade. It's probably one of the best races in the entire game for any class, especially Nightblade. We get robustness, increases our health, mag, and stamina recovery by 90. Okay, not bad. Lunar's Blessing, increases our max health, max stamina, and max mag by over 900. Not bad. But the one that carries the whole race, Feline Ambush, increases your critical damage and critical healing by 12 percent that is basically a more powerful version of a shadow mundus on a ratio passive and also it decreases our detection radius and stealth by three meters which is really nice probably hits the hardest out of all the ratio passives the thing is this is universal you can run this on mag and stand builds and you will feel no detriment at all some great alternatives if you are going more into mag breton would be really good high elf it's okay dark elf is also universal can work on any if you are going more into the stand version Imperial is really good. Orc would probably be the best one if you're not a Khajiit. Don't be a Redguard. Redguard is probably the worst. And don't sleep on Wood Elf for stamps. Wood Elf would be pretty good. Anything else I'd kind of maybe stay away from, to be honest. All right, but enough of that. Let's go over the cheese sets now. All right, so for the sets, first set we do run, obviously, surprise, surprise, Rallying Cry. Yes, Rallying Cry is just that good. I don't know why you wouldn't run it. I might be saying, Hex, Rallying Cry again, can you get any more original? Well, tell me any set that's better than Rallying Cry, Retro Vitality, Trickery, or Clever Alk. I'm pretty sure the people that are saying those those nasty things are the people that run Battle Lords and Sea Serpents on every build and think they're quote-unquote unique. 
But anyways, enough of that little joke. Basically, Rally Cry. I mean, it's there's it's a no-brainer. You get two lands of crit, which is really nice. Already got me sold. While Battle Spirit is active, basically anytime you're able to kill a player, Battle Spirit is active. So a duel, BGs, Cyrodiil, Imperial City. Anytime you critically heal yourself or an ally, you shoot out a buff around you. That increases your weapon and spell damage by 300 and crit resist by 1650. 1650 crit resist, that's equivalent to 25% damage reduction from the bonus damage of crits. And not only that, this can also affect allies for a reduced potency. The thing is, even if you affect one or two allies, that's 285 between the both of you. So that's over 560 weapon and spell damage between the both of you. Hit us two people with this, three of you guys get this buff. That's over 850 weapon spell damage between all three of you. You see where this can get out of hand? Like, it's backbarable. It gives you tankiness. It gives you damage. It can affect teammates. Plus, it has a over 100% uptime. This thing lasts for 20 seconds, and you can practice every 15 seconds. It's it's literally been a meta set since when it first came out. I'm surprised it's, until it catches a nerf, it's going to be one of the best sets in the game. Now, if you do want to swap this out, you could run Wretched Vitality back here. I unfortunately haven't crafted Wretched Vitality on PC yet. I need to get my I need to start crafting myself some Wretched Vitality here soon too. So if you want to run Wretched Vitality, if you do run Wretched Vitality on your Stamblade, then you really don't you don't have to run Siphoning Attacks if you don't want to. You could swap Killer's Blade for it, or you could run Wretched Vitality with Siphoning Attacks and just have infinite resources and never worry about <laughs> sustain ever again. It'd be really beyond bonkers. So the next set for monster set, obviously, Balors. I mean, Balors is a no-brainer. When you want damage, you go for Balors. Being able to get to a 500 weapon of spell damage and over 11k penetration, because when you drop your ultimate, that's it. You're committing to the kill, and all that extra weapon of spell damage, especially penetration, is what puts people down. Go defensive with this. When you pop a Balors and you delete somebody, you're, you can get like 200, 300 weapon of spell damage to your back bar heals, because this thing lasts for 12 seconds. It's really good to like go for a combo and then as soon as you go for that combo and you're getting heavily pressured you're, you're just instantly healing 16 17k crit healer like it's just beyond it's just crazy i was trying out this one set uh the new set monster set that came out uh and thalmer's construct i think it's pronounced um i didn't really like it too much i feel like it's more for a range build but if you do want to try this out with this build and kind of gank people a little bit or if you're running a group i feel like it could be good is that you have to do a fully charged heavy to do this physical damage and if you do hit people with this, you can actually delete players with the front bars that are running. It's there if you want it, but I feel like it wasn't that great. I won Balor's and I just didn't go back. And next we do run One Piece training because this is a meta front bar, back bar setup with a mythic. So why One Piece training? Because we do have one slot available. So why not slot training? Gives us the most max health for One Piece. And our mythic, I mean, obviously it, it's a it's it's a hex video. So obviously it's gonna be marking Ring of Majesty. This is my go-to, my pride and joy. So you put this build together and you put this ring on, you get 200 weapon spell damage and over 2300 armor. Just here you go for free. Don't even have to think. And that's it. No downside. We built it right. Unlike other mythics like sea serpents would give you the most damage and it's a great alternative. However, you do get that abysmal snare. I just don't like that because if you're getting snared in a 1vx, you're probably going to get your zerged over and die. I like being free. I like being able to move whatever. I'd like to just cast a race against time and be gone. And you try to chase someone that doesn't have sea serpent and they have race against time you're not catching them like me you're not catching me with sea serpents i dot you up with ellie says once you're never touching me now there is another mythic that everyone is hopping to is death dealers death dealers is also really good it's probably the most universal mythic in the entire game um it's up to you i personally prefer mitt marking because it gives you more damage and plus it gives you more tankiness so that's my opinion if you do want to go death dealers you can i feel like death dealers is just it's just the flavor of the month right now I don't know why people are hopping on it, but if you want to run it, no, no shame in it. Go ahead. It's there for you. And for our main set, we do run on the front bar. That is the cheese. I mean, you kind of knew this was a cheese build to begin with. I mean, I don't want any complainers. It's Tarnished Nightmare. Tarnished Nightmare is literally a nightmare in PvP. Thankfully, they fixed a bug with it that it was like going off proxy scaling. So you could hit people for like 30, 40 Ks of proxy with this thing. It was crazy, but they fixed that. So the two to four piece. Three lines of crit. I never thought I'd say this, but that's a lot of crit. That's a little too much crit. I wish there was a line of weapon to spell damage, but hey, we get what we get. The five piece. When you do critical damage to an enemy, they instantly explode with glass of shards, bursting out in an eight meter radius, dealing damage to them and any enemies within the eight meters. The tooltip might look a little low because we are unbuffed. The thing is, this also applies Sunder to the target, reducing their armor by almost 3K and also increasing you, the player's weapon to spell damage by 100. 
with an eight second cooldown. So the thing that makes this set just beyond crazy is that it instantly goes off. Most sets that do damage, they either have, they either do very little damage and they go off instantly, or if they do high damage, they have like a, they have a delay. Think of like Selene's, think of Veladreth, it has a delay with, so you can react to it. What's that one other set? Uh, Red Mountain has a delay. This one hits just as hard and it just goes off instantly. Boom, explodes. And it always puts under and it's on an eight second cooldown, which is just crazy. Like if you go for a heavy into an end cap bow, you're deleting somebody. You If that bow crits, you are instantly deleting somebody from the server. Not only are their health bars, but you're also deleting their hopes and dreams of everyone to play this game again. So right now, this is two days before PTS. I pretty sure this is gonna get a nerf. They had to sell the DLC somehow and this was their selling point, Tarnished Nightmare. So just be weary that coming Monday, I what's today, the 13th? So this, as I'm recording this video, the 13th, PTS drops the 15th. I'm pretty sure this is gonna get a small nerf or a pretty big nerf. So just be wary on this. But if you wanna enjoy it for the rest of the patch, go ahead. You got us up till May, not May, till June. You got up to June. All right, so for the way we do run it, we do run a dual wield of, tar of Tarnished Nightmare. It, please, if you're running on this on Nightblade, just go, just go Axis. I was trying to cook something up with Maces on a Nightblade. It was good, don't get me wrong, but just Axis would just be better. <laughs> That's what I kind of learned. So if you can, but if you do go Maces, you kind of make this universal. You can run this on any other build. You can run this on a Stamplar, Stamblade, no Stamblade, we're already Stamblade. Stamp Sword, you can run this on almost any other build. I feel like Axis is only really, really good on a Nightblade. It could work on other classes, but that's what I kind of went. This is basically the default stamp enchant it came with, which was really nice. Good for the stamp sustain, but mostly there be able to proc Sundered. Basically, whenever you do physical damage, you have a chance to proc Sundered, which enchants have the highest 20%, reducing their armor by 3k and granting you, the player, an extra 100 weapon spell damage. Might be saying, well, don't we get that from surprise attack? Yeah, the thing is, you're not always guaranteed to have it up. Sometimes you gotta play defensive and you have one opening to do an in cap bow combo. This will be there just in case that Sunder does fall off. And we do run Urn Home. Please, on the main hand, run Urn Home. It makes a difference. And on the off hand, we do run a Poison Damage Enchant with Sharpen. Poison Damage Enchant, really nice, does extra damage. Plus, they changed Poison Damage to do Execute Damage, yes. So basically, if they're at half health, Poison, the, the, the status effect of Poison will do 50% bonus damage, up to like double damage at low, like 1% health. But if you want, you could put almost anything here, Oblivion Damage, um, Flame if you, no, not flame, because you get that from LSS. You can put any other enchant. I prefer poison and sharpen because in PVP, penetration is keen. And for the back bar, we do run a Rallying Cry Ice Staff. The enchant, you could go almost anything. Uh, I was actually going poisons. Let me stop them. I was going, I did go drain stamina poisons. Increases the enemy's stamina ability cost by 10%. Nice, but not really meant for that. It's mainly meant for this. You also restore 238 stam per second for five and a half seconds. So that's basically over 1100 stam you're getting back instantly. And you really don't even have to run these if you didn't want to. Honestly, you could put double dot poisons back here and absolutely shred it. I might, I might do that. I might put some double dot poisons back here and just <laughs> actually smack players. But if you are having more sustain issues, here you go. And for the body, I do run the typical hex 322. Three heavy, two medium, two light. So we do run a heavy Balorx helm, heavy chest of the training, heavy shoulders of Balorx, a light sash and hands of Rallying Cry, and medium legs and feet of Tarnished Nightmare. For the enchants, if you can, try set all the pieces. And if you can't do that, try set the big pieces. What I mean by that is head, chest, and legs. And if you can't do that, max damage perfectly fine. Just adjust your health attributes at the end. And for my traits, you know, typical steel approval hex traits, six M pen, one reinforce. The only reinforce I have is a heavy chest of the trainee reinforce and the rest M pen. But if you do want to run some more heavy reinforced pieces or some more well fitted, go ahead. That's what I like about builds. We fit to our play style. And now before I forget, my people, most people might be arguing, why are you running in pen with rallying cry? Aren't you over cap? There is no such thing as hitting cap in PVP. So at base players will do 50% bonus damage. That's base. With in pen and rallying cry, we're getting almost, we're basically getting over 57% damage mitigation from crits. Now you're saying, oh, that's over cap. No, you have to realize that players do have access to extra ways to get extra crit. If we go here to Nightblade passive, hemorrhaging increases our damage done with crits by 10%. If we go to dual wield, axes increases your critical damage. The shadow, blue CP, Templar pass, you see, minor force. You see, there's so many ways to bump up crit. There's no such thing as, there's no such thing as over capping an impen. But that's where we go about builds. If you feel like you want to be able to roll dodge and avoid more attacks, go ahead. That's what I love about builds. We fit to our play style. And for the jewelry, 
we do run a Tarnished Nightmare Neck, Ring of the Rallying Cry, and a Marker Ring of Majesty, because it only comes in a ring. Duh. All infused, all with weapon to spell damage. Uh, preferably the ones that grab Stam Rico, but if you have one, or all with Mag Rico, would it make or break the build. And don't go Bloodthirsty. The reason you don't want to go Bloodthirsty is because Nightblades are so bursty in general, that like when they're at half health, an in-cap bow, if that bow crits, they're going to die. They're guaranteed to die. Plus, this extra weapon of spell damage from Infuse also affects our heals. So that's why I don't like Bloodthirsty. And for the food, we do run simple Jewels of Mistral, saying that purple food is perfectly fine. Gives a lot of max health and recover everything. But if you got a deep pocket, or don't mind spending a little extra, or Zaka Smoke Bear Hunch, gives you about 400 max health and slight more recover. And for the pots, simple Shrap Pots. Gives us a burst of everything, health, mag, and stam, and recoup of everything. You can either craft them yourself, or you can use the, the crown tripods, the ones that I was using right here, the ones you get from the crown store. Perfectly fine. All right, but enough of that, let's go over the CP now. All right, so for the blue CP, we do our focus mini, increase our healing done one single target deals, master at arms, increase our damage done with the red damage attacks, deadly aim, increase our damage done with single target attacks, which is basically our whole kit. And Ironclad reduces our damage taken from direct damage attacks. If you do want to swap this out for Duelist Rebuff, because this would actually reduce the damage of, of Dots. Dots are really prevalent in this patch right now. Like, they're getting out of hand. You can. Good flex spot. For the red CP, we do run Celerity. Increases our movement speed by up to 10%. Honestly, in my opinion, the best CP in the entire game. Survival Instant. While fit through the status effect, your core combat skills cost less. Pain's Refuge. The more negative effects we have acting on us, the tank you become. And Sustained by Suffering. While we have a negative effect, so basically anytime you PvP with somebody, someone's going to put a negative effect. You get 150 mag health and stamina recovery. And for the green CP, it doesn't ever really matter. The only ones you really want is Breakfall, Steve's Blessing, if you can, Rationer, Liquid Efficiency, and Gifted Rider. As you can see, I don't have that much CP on PC yet. I'm still grinding my CP. Just letting you know that I was still smacking kids with low CP. But all right, cool beans. Hope you guys did enjoy the build video. Honestly, I just, I mean, if you want to go the Shatter Fate, you could still go the Shatter Fate. I mean, still perk works perfectly fine. Um, I feel like Tarnished Nightmare is just easier for the beginner players, plus, or you just want to cheese people down because Tarnished Nightmare, if you heavy attack it to an in-cap bow and it all crits, a good night. Hope this is a keep your buy for them as that. But Hope you guys did enjoy the build video. Like the video if you liked it. Comment your thoughts or experience with the build. Sorry for the delay. I've just been grinding my PC account. Been having a ton of fun on my PC account. If you guys can, hit the like subscribe button. Really goes a long way. Greatly do appreciate it. You know the rest. Hope you guys did enjoy the build video. Like the video if you liked it. Comment your thoughts or experience with the build. Also, anything I might have missed out. What video should you do next? Subscribe for more. But most importantly, stay Zergin.